In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My grandpa's truck smelled like dirt and chainsaw oil and alfalfa straw mingled with melting fish lures cooking in the hot Oklahoma sun in the summer. I smell it every time I think of him. The truck was a two-tone Ford, a rusted, dusted white cap over a faded copper body. I used to sit in the back bed with the rusted hay piercer that was probably attached during the Oklahoma land run. My job was to guide and direct the hay piercer into a perfect bullseye as we moved bales of hay like chess pieces around the farm in Perry, Oklahoma. Some of my favorite moments are the bumpy rides in the back of that truck, but not for the smell or the three pounds of perspiration that seemed to slide off me as the day wore on, but for time spent with my papa. For most people at this time in our history, it was about being like Mike, Michael Jordan that is. It's what all the commercials were about, but not for me. For me, I wanted to be like Papa. I didn't need to run faster or jump higher or win championships. Instead, I wanted to be like the man who was so sure of who he was. I wanted to be the calm presence he always radiated. I wanted to be able to remember names with unflinching certainty. I wanted to have kindness so thick You'd have to brush it away from your face just to be able to walk. Most of all, I wanted to be able to fish like him. Papa is the ultimate fish whisperer, the one who always catches more than his limits so that he can share his spoils with us mere humans. Papa was my teacher and I was his willing disciple, and still am. In the midst of Father's Day and a scripture this morning that reminds us that it is enough to be like the teacher. I find myself fondly remembering the lessons my papa taught me. With inexhaustible patience, he taught me how to tie a knot on the end of a fly rod. I remember that as we walked, he would suddenly begin to hum a happy tune to no one in particular, mainly to himself, as if some happiness inside him could not stay there, but had to burst forth. Most of all, I remember the way he treated others. Even a teenage, difficult grandson with respect, honor, and dignity. In some senses, Papa was the first incarnation of what the image and likeness of Christ looked like in flesh and blood, at least for me. Before I ever decided to follow Jesus, as the gospel hymn says, I decided to follow Papa. I knew and still know that I will never be greater than my teacher. But as Jesus reminds us, it is enough for a disciple to be like the teacher, but like the teacher, I want to be. For many people today, being a Christian is about ascribing to this doctrine or this dogma or this liturgical style. It's about this cause or this program or this latest agenda. Now, don't get me wrong. All of those are important. Some are even essential for our well-being and continued survival as humanity. But in the end, it's not about any of that. It's about being like Jesus. Jesus is the model, the teacher, the example of what it means to be in love with God and with each other. Jesus can never be reduced to a statement, a value, a doctrine, or agenda. Jesus is always a person. 
which is all of those things and so much more. I'm not sure that I could tell you what my papa's mission, strategy, or tactics were. Papa never advocated for a program or agenda. He just lived it. I learned more from his example and his way of being in the world than anything he ever said. I wanted to be like him because of who he was, not necessarily what he said. The same can be said of being a follower of Jesus. It doesn't matter if you understand what it means to say that he was fully human and fully God, or what it means to say that he is one with the Holy Spirit and God the Father. What matters is that you be like him in everything you do and say, every day, in every way. If you become a disciple of Jesus, you will always be growing, learning, falling, and failing, getting back up and starting again. It's not thriving that matters. It's the striving that is key. I will never be the fish whisperer that my papa is, but I'm going to try. You and I will never be Jesus, but we must try. Each of us must find our own way. Each of us has our own journey to travel. That's the good news. But it's also the hard news. No one else can do it for you. You have to decide if you want to follow Jesus. To be his disciple. It'll be hard work. But eternally rewarding. You have to decide if you're going to climb up in the rusted bed of the truck with the smell of oil, alfalfa, and fish so you can spend a little time with Jesus. It just might be some of the best days of your life. I've decided to be like Papa. I've decided to be like Jesus. What about you?